So I've had my American Express Platinum card for over four years now, paying almost $2,500 in annual fees over that time, which is quite a lot. So in this video, we'll go over my full experience with the card, any mistakes and regrets, a walkthrough of a major redemption I did, and ways to make sure you're getting the most out of your card. Now, when I got my card years ago, the welcome bonus was a measly 75,000 points, which is a lot lower than what it is now offering a baseline of 80,000 points and regular offers as high as 150,000. This is awesome given how valuable Amex points are where on the low end, you can get a cash value of 0.6 cents per point, meaning the welcome bonus is worth anywhere from $480 to $900, or even higher at over 2 cents per point on average, which would pin your welcome bonus anywhere from $1,600 to $3,000 of value, which I'll walk through later on. And as with any card, the bulk of the value comes from the welcome bonus. So make sure you're able to hit that minimum spend over the first six months, or honestly, I'd just say it's flat out not worth it. And that's equally true with all the credits that this card offers. Because honestly, this is not the type of card that you're gonna be spending on every day. And despite it giving me so much value, it almost never has a spot in my wallet. Because if we take a look at the points you'd earn from spending, there's only a couple of categories where you're earning an elevated five times points booking flights through the Amex portal or direct with the airline, five times on prepaid hotels, also through their site, and one times on everything else. So unless you're traveling like every single day and you're booking flights through non-discount sites, then you're probably not gonna be spending on these categories much. In my experience, unless I'm booking a hotel that's part of the Find Hotels and Resorts program, or I'm booking a simple flight direct through the airline, all my other travel needs are usually booked on other cards like like my Capital One Venture X, giving me two times points on all my spend, or my Chase Sapphire Preferred, giving me two times on travel purchases. Which brings me to the first perk that I regularly use once or twice a year on my Amex Plat, and that would be the $200 hotel credit and making hotel bookings through FHR. Now, the FHR hotels are amazing because of the few perks that come with every booking, including early check-in and late checkout, to room upgrades, daily breakfast, a $100 experience credit, and complimentary Wi-Fi for places that don't offer any. But on the downside, I have found it difficult to find some decent bookings for mid-tier hotels because the portal always seems to overprice them compared to other sites. So my primary use here is booking hotels when I have trips to Las Vegas because those hotels seem to be pretty in line with normal prices. For example, a couple of years ago, I booked a stay at the Bellagio Hotel where I got a slight room upgrade, as well as this notice showing all the perks of an FHR hotel, including all the ones I mentioned, with the experience credit being used towards food at most MGM restaurants. Luckily, we got a last minute reservation at the One Michelin Star L'Atelier by Joao Robuchon, which was an amazing experience. So with at least one stay a year, that's not only letting you use the $200 hotel credit, but a couple hundred dollars worth of of extras that come with any FHR booking. That said, even though I may not be booking FHR, the Amex Plat still offers an amazing experience at many hotels, given it offers elevated status with Marriott and Hilton Gold for as long as I have the card. So I travel for work from time to time, and even with Marriott Gold, I've been able to get upgrades here and there. And when you're staying for a week at a time, that could be a significant difference, like getting this amazing corner suite when I was at the W San Francisco. So even traveling domestically, there's definitely some value to be had here. But speaking of work, one mistake that has cost me several hundred dollars is not realizing that I could be saving on the annual fees every year by having a corporate card. Basically, there are companies out there that offer their employees corporate cards where they can spend business expenses on instead of going through their own card and having to file expenses one by one. Though personally, I still go through my personal cards and then go through those expenses because I want those points. That said, by having a corporate card, that makes you eligible for discounts across a variety of Amex cards, like getting $150 off the annual fee of the Platinum, $100 off on the Gold, 
75 off on the Amex Green and $50 off on the Blue Cash Preferred. Meaning all this time, especially the first couple of years, I could have been saving hundreds of dollars had I known this earlier. So lesson here, check if your employer offers Amex corporate cards because you could be leaving money on the table. All right, next credit on the card that I always, always use every single month would be the $200 Uber credit, spanning $15 a month and $35 in December. For Uber Eats, I actually used to order a lot, maybe one to two times a week, which would cost me $20 to $30 each time. But I've since toned that down, thankfully. Though I do still spend on Uber directly, given I don't have a car, so I rely on Uber or Lyft for my mid-distance trips, which you can probably tell by looking at my most recent transactions on the card. Though to be honest, another mistake here is that I should have swapped out the Amex Plat for a different card once I've used up the credit in order to get maximum value, but that's just not something that comes to mind every single month. So technically it is leaving money on the table because I'm not really optimizing my spend across my cards. Because cards like the Saver One from Capital One offers both Uber One and 10% off on Uber purchases throughout the end of 2024, which could really save me a lot of money. But speaking of optimizing, I do want to say that you don't have to be squeezing every dollar out of your card to make them worth it. Your time is money too, and so is having to constantly remember all these little things and taking up brain space, which just may not be worth it for those few extra dollars. And on top of that, you definitely don't want to force yourself to spend on things that you wouldn't have otherwise, only to trigger certain credits and get maximum value. Which is true for me and certain credits on the Amex Plat, like the $240 on digital entertainment, $155 to Walmart Plus, and $300 to Equinox digital or club memberships, which is technically leaving like $700 of value to be had. But personally, I just haven't found much need for these perks. I know digital entertainment is a major one for a lot of people, but I just don't use any of the services on the list. Maybe Peacock when it came to Olympic season, but that's really about it. For Walmart Plus, I mainly grocery shop at some stores within walking distance of my place, or I order things through Amazon given I have Prime, so there's no major use here. Although you do get Paramount Plus along with Walmart Plus, so it could be a perk that could benefit you if you watch that. And Equinox, I usually go to the gym and do my own thing, but maybe I would try it out if it were in my city, but they aren't. So this $300 is worth exactly zero. Now I mentioned earlier that I only spend on this card for very specific things like certain travel, but there is another time I spend on this card and that's if I'm spending towards certain offers that American Express offers. And from experiencing offers across American Express, Chase and Capital One, Amex definitely has one of the best sets of offers out there to save you the most amount of money. Where just on American Express offers alone, I've saved over $500 through purchases I would have made anyways, just made better through having these offers. You do have to activate these offers before you spend on them, which is another small mistake I've done on this card. But if you click over to some of the offers I've already added, you see ones like $20 back from Adidas, $10 from TurboTax, which of course, because it's tax season, hotel offers like Marriott and Hyatt, as well as clothing spots like Lululemon, Mr. Porter, Cause, and a few others. And as you can see, the savings through these offers is quite significant and really do outshine other offers like on Chase, where you cap out at five, $10 per offer, compared to over $100 sometimes on Amex. And don't forget that most of these also stack with sites like Rakuten, which will offer you five, 10, sometimes 20% back on your purchases just by using their link which works because Rakuten gives you your rewards based on the link you use, whereas Amex offers usually give you the rewards based on the charge on your card. And so Rakuten is another source where I get my Amex points from because of their partnership, which allows you to redeem that cash back to Amex points instead at a one cents per point rate. If you're interested in saving money, buying things you would have bought anyways, then check out Rakuten. I'll have a link down below to sign up and when you make your first purchase, you can get $30. Enjoy. All right, now if you do a fair amount of online shopping, then you'll understand when I say it's really annoying when certain retailers have strict return policies or don't accept returns at all. Especially when you combine that with always wanting to find the best deals because those ones are usually 
the final sales. But one perk on this card that's not talked about that much, but I think is one of the most underrated ones is the return protection. Because whenever you buy eligible things on the card, you'll be covered up to $300 an item or $1,000 per year if their merchant won't take the item back. And the whole process is really smooth too, like filling out a couple of forms, making sure you give them all the details, waiting a while, and then getting a notice like this one when I did so last year, telling me the status has been updated and approved and that the payment has been credited. Maybe I'm just lucky or Amex is just that nice, but through the few times that I've gone through return protection, they've never asked for the item back, which saves me a lot of hassle. Now, return protection is my most used shopping perk, saving me hundreds of dollars throughout the years. But I know some people who have made good use of the other shopping perks, like purchase protection covering against damage or theft for 90 days, up to $10,000 in a or extended warranty giving you an extra year if you have warranties of five years or less, also up to $10,000 an item. Those protections themselves could be saving you hundreds if not thousands of dollars depending on what you buy, and really makes me reconsider which card I buy things on even though the Amex Plat may not give me the best return when you were talking about points. But what I love about this card is all the travel perks and benefits that it gives me. Now, we've talked about how the Platinum card elevates my hotel experience through the hotel credit, FHR, and Elite status. But it also makes my flights that much better too. First off, I always use the $200 in airline fee credit every single year. Now, it's not the easiest credit to use given you can only use it towards incident dental charges, but I fly regularly enough to spend that $50 or $100 to upgrade my seats on Alaska or Delta flights to the premium cabins, which makes my experience just that little bit better and lets me board early so I don't have to worry about overhead bin space. But even before getting on the plane, having lounge access to Centurion lounges or priority pass lounges for myself and a couple guests has been a game changer. For example, if I fly out of SeaTac alone, then I could visit the Centurion Lounge, which in fact there's a new one that just opened which I still have yet to visit. Or when I'm traveling with others, having access and being able to bring them along with me is amazing too. Especially on my recent trip to Spain where we had some pretty decent food while waiting for our flight including some fish, ham, and more. And depending on where you fly or how you fly, Amex has the widest variety of lounges for you to visit, with not only Centurion and Priority Pass, but also Delta when you're flying with them, Plaza Premium, Lufanza, and others. So by using this card, I can get better seats when I'm flying in some instances, and the ability to visit lounges before I take off. But even before that, I'm able to level up my experience through the $189 a year clear credit, which lets me skip whichever line there is and fast track through the ID check straight to the security lines. Then having a Nexus card allows me to go through the TSA pre-check line where I don't have to take off my shoes and belt and other things too. Unfortunately, the Amex Plat does not cover Nexus, but it does cover TSA pre-check and global entry, which is what most people tend to go with anyways. Then there's the peace of mind having travel protections when I travel, like covering delays of over six hours, trip cancellation, baggage delays, and a few others. So by now you can probably see how this card is so valuable despite me not spending on it every single day. But the most amazing part about this card are the opportunities it gives me to go on some amazing aspirational trips where I'd have a hard time justifying paying for them with cash directly. For example, I almost exclusively use my Amex points by transferring them to one of their travel partners, where I can fairly easily get value of over two cents per point on average, if not more. And there are some pretty lucrative programs on the list too. For example, one of the paths most people talk about is transferring to ANA and flying business class in seats like these for as low as 75,000 points, and that's without any active transfer bonuses. If you instead opted to pay straight cash for that flight, that could be over $7,000. Even if you factor in taxes and fees when you're using points, that could still pin the value of your points at over 10 cents per point, way, way above the two cents average. Now, yes, the better the redemption, the harder it is to find, and you do have to either look very far in advance or be really flexible on when you can fly. 
but if you really learn about how to nail these sweet spots, then it's not that bad. Personally, I've actually booked a major trip to Asia this year for my parents and I. So three people flying purely through points and in business class. For example, we'll be flying from the west coast over to Singapore, then Korea, and then Japan all in business class except for the first repositioning flight, flying on the amazing Singapore Airlines for three people which would have costed at least $7,000 per ticket. But instead, I transferred over some Amex points, topped it off with some points from Capital One, and booked the whole trip for 137,500 points and about $150 US per person, meaning an approximate value of about $0.05 cents per point. Yes, it's not the most amazing redemption out there, but anything that much higher than the $0.02 cents per point average is a win, I'd say. Especially with such a complex itinerary for a specific time, and having space for all three of us is a rare find. And honestly, that's one of the biggest reasons for learning about credit cards and points, which is to go on these aspirational trips and bring my close ones with me, especially when they've never in their life even dared to dream about flying in business class. So it's a trip I'm really looking forward to. Now, one theme I've noticed that carries through my entire experience with American Express has got to be their amazing customer service. Never have I had to struggle figuring out an issue or having questions answered because of their amazing live chat feature on their site. And although I wish they bring back concierge through email, when I've gotten them to help with things on the phone like suggesting or booking places in a foreign country like Japan, they've been extra helpful. There's even some stories online with them planning entire trips or buying flowers for someone in a whole different state. And that theme seeps through the way they care about their user base too. Like offering extra credits during the last few years when travel wasn't really a thing, or giving some amazing retention offers like 50,000 points after another minimum spent, which at the two cents per point average could be worth around $1,000. Moving forward though, I may have to start looking closer at this card because the spend on it has been going down a bit, especially with some amazing cards recently like the Capital One Venture X. But then again, from the $200 in hotel credit, $200 in Uber cash, $200 in the airline credit, $189 on the clear credit, and $100 on the Saks Fifth Avenue credit, that's almost $900 of value far exceeding the $695 annual fee. And that's not including the $150 you could get from having the corporate card. But I understand the annual fee is really high and not everyone could use the credits to the same degree. And so whether or not the Amex Plat is right for you, I suggest checking out the Venture X and the Capital One Duo for some seriously compelling value. I'll see you over there.